the one-handed backhand for newer players. Usually as tennis coaches, when we have new players, we teach them a two-hander for the very simple reason that it's actually, for most players, a little easier to make contact sooner and more reliably. And then they, yeah, they stick in a two-hander. But you'd be surprised how many players I coach that have one-handers who are fairly new to tennis. So I figured I'll do a video specifically for you if you're a newer player and you want to learn the one-handed backhand. It all starts with the grip. The easiest way to find it for a one-hander is the underside of your index finger and knuckle and the meaty part of your palm. Want to be on the top side of your racket so that when you are holding the racket, it should look something like this. You see my knuckles pointing to you when I have the tip of the racket and the butt of the racket parallel. From the side, it looks like this. This way, my wrist is neutral. I'm not having to tilt or bend it in any way. Yes, there are some players, and I'm thinking about Justine Anna, that have more extreme backhand grips. They're actually moseying over to bevel number two towards the left if you are a right-hander. But since this is a video for newer players, let's stick with the Eastern backhand grip. Yes, it's called a one-handed backhand, but you're still using both hands. And this comes after a lesson we had last week. So chat, if you're watching this, this is for you. Two hands in the preparation. However, the left hand, your off hand, my left hand, because I'm a right-hander, needs to be on the throat of the racket. You don't want to have it here. You don't want to have it down here. So left hand on the throat of the racket. And the left hand is very dominant in helping you to achieve a coil, your unit turn, your shoulder, your hip go back, whichever you call that. You want to be able to get into this position. You want to be so far turned that my right shoulder blade faces to my opponent and that my chin can almost, ooh, almost touch my right shoulder. Now, of course, I keep my eyes on the court. My left hand also helps me lift the racket. And depending on what one hand are you watching, every single one of them will have the racket face above their right hand. So the left hand not only helps with the take back, it also helps with the lift. So for instance, if you're thinking about Stefano Tsitsipas, He's got a pretty high take back and it's the left arm here that helps with that take back. So this position is your first checkpoint that you want to get into. The left hand also stays attached to the racket as the racket then drops down. So you have the tip of the racket pointing up, the racket face above the wrist, and now you're letting gravity take over Left hand relaxes a lot more and the racket tip now points slightly down. It can be ever so slightly close, the racket face. Either one is fine, but you want to work on getting a loop. Now in your hitting position, you're getting into what's called the lock-in position, the butt cap pointing towards the incoming ball. And that basically tells you that your preparation, your loading is done. And in this position, you will also have the racket head below your wrist. The tip of the racket points slightly down. The racket face can be slightly closed. That's a little bit more to do with the grip and or also individual flavor. When does the left hand separate from the racket? Around the hip. So specifically put these pants on here to demonstrate that. So I'm separating my hand as I'm coming to my pocket, my hip, stripes, whichever way you want to think about it. But careful here, your left hand does not want to come around. Then you may as well just hit a two-hander. Your left hand serves yet another purpose. It helps you stay side on and also balanced. So as I'm now swinging forward and up to my contact point, which ideally I want to make in front of my body, and also with the tip of the racket not significantly dropping because I'm seeing some really weird stuff. So you want to try to keep that racket 
parallel to the ground as much as you can. Yes, it can dip down a little bit, but yeah, definitely not this. I'm thinking this might be cricket. Contact point out here, left hand goes down and back, stays down and back. You have some variations where people literally have it up here. Either one is fine. What you don't want to do is this. The one-hander is a fantastic shot. I switched when I was 11. However, it does have some disadvantages until you've really mastered it. And if you want to find out exactly how to exploit when somebody hits a one-hander, you gotta check out the Singles Playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. It has a ton of options on how you can start putting a one-hander on the defense right away, right with the serve, by the way. So if you pick it up, again, link down below, you just hover over the QR code, little video pops up, and it describes exactly how you're gonna beat those one-handers. And so that you're not gonna be one of those one-handers that people beat with the Fuzzy Yellow Balls Singles Playbook, we're gonna continue with the video. Because we're all watching the Federers, the Vavrinkas of the world, the Anas, the Moresmos, me, kidding. When they hit that one-handed backhand, what a lot of players try to mimic, what they think they're mimicking, is this. When you see, for instance, Grigor Dimitra finish, he's somewhere here. And what a lot of players are translating that into, they're ripping open way too soon. Here's one key thing for your one-handed backhand. Yes. Hip and shoulder are absolutely rotating towards the ball in a rounder fashion. But at point of contact, your upper body, your chest is actually still facing pretty much side on, kind of pointing a little bit to your left. So if you're feeling that your entire left shoulder is open as you're hitting, you're going to be in big time trouble. And remember this wild throwing themselves around is a function of loading like animals, of loading really well with their legs, with their coil here. It's a function of the energy that they created, stored, and then unleashed. Unless you're loading like the pro players, don't unleash like the pro players. What I would be very happy with for newer players on the one-handed backhand is that they have the tip coming down, the tip coming up again, being almost parallel as you're making contact. And as you're falling through, you rotate the tip of the racket up into the sky. So now tip of the racket points up into the sky. The side with which I hit faces to the outside that way. That way I know that I'm rolling over the ball. Spacing of the one-handed backhand, another thing that might be a little difficult in the beginning. Now, where do I space in terms of height? Where do I want to catch that ball? And that is one of the, I do want to say slight disadvantages of a one-hander. It is a lot more comfortable to catch that ball top of the thigh, hip, and waist. Anywhere here feels pretty good. If it's coming higher, yeah, that's where two-handers have an advantage because they have the stability of the left hand. What as one-handers we might want to do is we might want to drop back because that's a lot easier in the beginning. It slows the ball down and it lets the ball drop back into our strike zone that we like a lot more. Oh, and by the way, I have a whole video on how to deal with high backhands. The link is down below in the description, so check it out. Spacing to the side. How far away should I be from the ball? Well, you always got to figure in the extension of your racket, of course. But if you're thinking a one-hander, we always talk about, well, you have more reach with a one-hander. What you don't want to do is this. I'm not going to be very stable if I'm that far out. I'm hitting my best backhand when I'm fairly close behind the ball. So you see here the distance between really the ball and my hip is really only the racket length. When I'm swinging and I catch it at the perfect spot, my right hand is in front of my body here. For the most part, I'm right behind the ball. And here's why. Here, when I have my arm in front, you see that much air that I have here. I don't want to be chicken winging it. Here, I'm strong. Here, I control the ball. 
anything that's too far to the side, too close in, the ball's gonna bully me. And I really don't like that. If you want to see a fabulous one-hander in a little bit more detail, watch Dominic Team's one-hander. I'm super happy that this guy is coming back from injury. And do look at that video, how much of that upper body rotation you can spot before he's making contact. Um, hint, not a whole lot. So stay side on, on your backhand, and watch this next video.